So welcome to the Simplicity of the Gospel brought to you by the Pegwell Community Church of Christ Church in Barbados. Today we are in Revelation chapter 4 and we are speaking on the subject, increase your capacity for giving God's pleasure. We're going to read from verse 1 because after the seventh letter, John heard a voice. A door was opened in heaven and the voice said to John, John, come up here. And John came up went up into heaven he said whether in the flesh or whether in the spirit he doesn't really really know but he went into heaven he saw some wonderful things i want to read them this morning because the bible said that the time is coming when there's going to be a famine for the hearing not a famine for the word but a famine for the hearing of the word of god you go in many churches this morning you hear politics you go in many churches this morning you hear jokes you hear all kind of stuff and there's becoming that famine for the hearing of the word. Not at the Pegwell Community Church. We're going to speak the word. Preach the word. Whether. Like the Bible says. Be instant in season. Out of season. Whether you want it or not. Whether you vomit up or not. You're going to get the word. You're not going to get the newspaper. You're not going to get politics from this pulpit. You're going to get the word of God. So he entered into heaven. If you don't have a Bible. Look on the screen. And you're going to get a good idea. What heaven is like. After that, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me. And it said, come up hither, and I will show you things that must be hereafter. You're with me so far? Then talk to me a little bit louder so we get you on tape. You're with me? And immediately he said, I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. I think that's important because sometimes when we come to church, we talk about and we have a desire to enter into the throne room. You hear people talk a lot about the throne room. People are so, so disobedient to God. People who are so disrespectful. But they like to talk about the throne room because it makes them feel good. Enter into the throne room. But we're going to enter into the throne room now. And we're going to have a look at what your attitude ought to be in the throne room. Verse 3. And he that sat on the throne was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like an emerald. I don't think we'd be able to take that. And around and about the throne were four and twenty seats. How many seats around the throne? And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Were they sitting or standing? sitting and they were clothed in pink garments right they were clothed in white garments and they had on their head crowns of gold so you have a picture that's why we sang this morning to him who sits on the throne be glory and honor and dominion and power forever so this is what's happening in heaven verse 5 and out of the throne proceed lightnings and thunderings and voices some people come to church and pardon me if you have a problem with tinnitus or if you have problems with some other ear infection or whatever. But some people come to church and they expect the music to be like a quiet, like a little church mouse. And the ones who are the culprits are the ones who deliberately sit in front of the speakers and then tell you to turn them. If you know that you can't take the noise, sometimes you're a little bit too loud, um, noisy, I agree with that. But when you go to a wedding, you sit right there in front of that speaker that is blaring. But as long as that food is in front of you, you're not moving. Did somebody say amen to that? But when they come into the church, they want us to turn, tell you to, in this big church, when the music is really, really soft, it doesn't sound good at all to me. But anyhow, that's beside the point. Look at the noise that is in heaven. I haven't even got yet to the thousands of thousands, maybe millions that are, that are worshiping God. Thousands of thousands. I haven't even got to that yet. No, I promise you that we're not going to burst your ears with the music, but don't expect us to turn it real. The Bible tells us, praise the Lord with a loud noise, make a joyful noise and things like that. But I'm back again um, at, at, at verse 5. And out of the throne proceed lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps, how many lamps? Of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like on the crystal. I'm describing heaven, people. I'm describing the throne room. 
I'm describing him that's seated on the throne and all these lightnings and thunderings and all that. All this is going on in heaven. And now he said, and before the throne was like a sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. These four beasts had eyes in front and eyes behind. Listen to the four beasts. Verse 7. The first beast was like a lion. The first beast was like a what? And the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like the, a flying eagle. I'm describing heaven. We always say we don't know what heaven is like. No, no, no. The Bible gives us a lot about heaven. Well, you know, are there animals in heaven? Yes, there are animals in heaven. The Bible tells us about, about Jesus coming on a white horse. Where do you think the white horse is coming from? So there are animals in heaven. If you are a pet, is there? I can't tell you. But I know there are animals in heaven. Are we going to eat in heaven? Of course we're going to eat in heaven. There are lots of good things we, that will be done in heaven. But let me re read verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings. How many wings? And there were full of eyes within. And there rest not day and night. This was going on in heaven. Notice that nobody's begging them to lift their hands. Notice that nobody's begging them to open their mouth. Notice that nobody's doing that. Uh, they rest not day and night. And they were saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Do you have an idea of what we're talking about? Can you, can you draw a picture of that if you had... If you're an artist, would you be able to draw what, you, what we just talked about? You guys are not talking to me. Verse 9. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, so that has to be God Almighty, the four and twenty elders, now verse 9 says, when the four beasts, all right? But now we come to the elders of verse 10. The four let me read from verse 9 so it will be continuous. Verse 9. When those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Now, tell me, what did it? 24 elders do from verse 10. Verse 10. I want to read this because sometimes we come to church with this arrogance. I am more than anybody else. I have more of God than anybody else. I hear from God more than anybody else. You know, and that is that for anybody who knows the scripture, that is evidence that you are so far from what you are, what you're pretending. You're going to see that these elders are before God. And we're going to notice that they're going to take their crowns off. You see all the accolades that you might get in this life. You might get it through education, through social work. You're called the honorable this, the honorable that, the mighty this, the mighty that. And you have a lot of things, and I call them the crown that is on your head. And you can strut through the country with your crown on your head because there are others that don't have those crowns. If you understand me, give me an amen. We even have it in the church. People come to church with that attitude. Look at me. Those are persons who come late deliberately. If they have a good figure to look at, they want to, they want to show it in the congregation. And those who think that they're so spiritual, you know what they do. They look at you as though you're the scrap of the earth. Somebody's dog just dragged you in. And they seem to be walking six inches off the earth. Why did I get into all that? Because I'm going to show you that the 24 elders in heaven, look at what they did. If the day that you enter in the throne room and you really see this God that we are talking about with all the flashings of lightnings and all that. We have a song with that which we're going to sing. This flashing of lightnings and thunder and the sea of glass. And you see the four beasts and you see the 24 elders. When you see those, these elders say, no, 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 no. I can't keep on my ground. There's somebody greater. When you see God, that is your attitude. There's somebody greater. So let's read verse 9 and 10 one more time. 
And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who lived forever and ever, then the 24 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne. Today, even in the pulpits, everybody wants to be lifted up. I'm Reverend Dr. Pastor this. You can't address me unless you address me as Dr. So-and-so, Dr. Les tomorrow. You're going to be pastor, this pastor. Everybody's trying to lift themselves up with a degree, a doctorate that you didn't even earn. You went up to the States and two, some two, two by three church with 50 members. And because they have the, the right legally to if, uh, issue a doctorate, they give you a doctorate and you come back to Barbados and you're like a, like a peacock. You didn't even earn it. Anybody understand what I'm saying? In church, there's so much pride in the pulpit. Somebody asked me some time ago, and it, it really disturbed me. That's why I talk about it so much. Somebody asked me why we are church, why we are shirt with the same emblem as the, as the ushers. So who the ushers are? They're not people. You know that the pastor is the biggest servant in the church, or you haven't learned that yet. He that will be Lord of all must be servant of all. Why, why are you wearing the same logo as the, uh, as the you know, they're looking down on the, el, uh, on the eldership of the church. Not so in this case. I'm belaboring this point so that after today, you will not go into any church and think because the Lord is using you in some prophetic utterance. Or maybe the Lord uses you to lay hands on the sick and something happened. You must no longer walk around the country or walk around the church, bringing your feathers like a peacock, showing how beautiful you are. Look at me. Look at me. No, 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 no. So here again, I'm going after verse 9. But this time, I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation because I don't want you to miss this. Verse 9. Whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, that's what you do when you enter into the throne room. The one who lives forever and ever, that is almighty. Look what happened. The 24 elders fall down. And they worship the one sitting on the throne. The one who lives forever and ever. And this is the part I want you to get. And they lay their crowns before the throne and say, stop there. They lay their crowns. So you think because you've got a big house, you've got to wear your crown all the time in the presence of God? You think because you have a doctorate or a master's or a bachelor's, I'm not against any of those things. I wish I had some. Because you have some money. Because God is using your political area. Do you think that you're cut above the rest? Do you think that you're the creme de la creme? You think that you're the brightest part in the bunch? Because you have those? Those will only be good enough for this earth. But the day that you come into church, you don't have to wait until you die. Like this morning. The, the time you come into church and you find yourself in the throne room before God. What you actually do is you lay your crown, all your earthly achievements. Like I said, all the accolades that people would have given you because it is not worthy to stand in the presence of God. If you understand me, give me a loud amen. That amen is too poor. Amen, amen, amen. I'm trying to tell you that we need, when we see, you can always tell when somebody doesn't see God. They're trying to pretend. Trend, and that is hypocrisy. Trying to be more than they are. But when you see God, listen, go through the Bible and you'll see. When people came in contact with God, they, they fell down and worship. They fell down and worship. You know, they, 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 didn't, they didn't stand up, you know, look at me, you got a crown, I got one to God. No, no, no. They took off their crowns. By crowns, I'm talking about all these earthly achievements that make you something in the eyes of the populace. Make you something in the eyes of people. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the crowns. But these people, they lay their crowns before, before the throne. And listen to what they say from the King James Version. This is going to be my text. This is what they say. The first thing they did is take off their throne. They humbled themselves. They took off their crowns. They cast their crowns before the throne of God. And this is what they said. You will never be able to do that. Unless you understand the two verses that I'm going to read now. The two verses that I'm going to read is what made them do what they did. So they cast their crown before the throne saying, look at verse 11. You are worthy. Not me. 
You are worthy, O oh Lord. Oh, I'm crying out for the time that we get to that place at Pegwell. I'm praying for us to get to that place. You are worthy, O oh Lord. From worthy, you get worth. We did that sometime ago. We talked about that about two weeks ago. Thou art worthy, Lord, to receive glory. You, not me. The praise is not for me. The glory is not for me. The honor is not for me. You are worthy, Lord, to receive glory and honor. Question. Question. Is the God you serve worthy to receive glory from you? Huh? So, let's think about his worth then. Before you get to worthy, think of his worth. What is he worth to you? Is he worth your praise? When somebody comes home and wants to marry your daughter, you're going to go carry him through the ringer. Is he worth your daughter? Does he work? Does he bathe? Uh, is he worth your daughter? Talk to me now. Talk to me. I'm talking about God being worthy. So from worthy, from worth you get worthy. Is God worthy of your obedience? Is God worthy of your praise? Is God worthy of your honor? Is God worthy? If so, you know the worst thing you have in the whole world is that you're working for a boss and he's paying you, he's paying you $150 a day. He's telling you every day, but you know, you, you know, you really worth $300 a day, you know. You pay me $150, I worth $300. You can tell me that every day. Don't tell me, give me. Give me the $300. If you think that God is worthy, don't just keep saying that. Give him. Give him the worth that is due to his name. Worth is important. We could even have a bartering system here, which I won't get into now as, as you think about the worth of God. You are worthy, Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. And this is last part is what I want to talk about this morning. I won't have a lot of time, but it says, For you, Lord, have created all things. And for your pleasure, they are and were created. We are created to give God pleasure. We are created, we are created to please God. From the word pleasure, what is pleasure? The word pleasure is delight or happiness. For your delight, for your happiness, man is created. What does the scripture say about giving God pleasure? What does the scripture say about pleasing God? Don't forget what I'm talking about this morning, but go on some little cat trails or whatever. But I want you to know that God expects you to increase your capacity to please him. We are in a world today where we please ourselves. We don't give a damn about anybody else. The traffic could be a mile long if I got to stop in a place I shouldn't stop and get a dollar, a $3.50 from somebody getting in. I'm going to wait for that person to walk half mile. I'm going to block all the traffic because I don't care. I don't have to please you. I'm pleasing nobody. Notice that I'm just talking about disarming. Hmm? Stop what it wherever. You come to church, some of the same things happen. Poor pastor God keep his mouth shut. You live in a house, you dare not say anything because everybody thinks I have my own way. I please myself. I don't care about you. I please myself. We are created to please God. And not everything that you and I do, not everything pleases God. Not everything pleases God. So let's hear some scripture about pleasing God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. The Lord says, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Brethren, when you present your bodies a living sacrifice to God, acceptable, that pleases God. Are you doing that? Or are you using your body for adultery and fornication? The Bible said that the body is not for adultery and fornication. The body is for the Lord. If we misuse our bodies, then we are not pleasing God. We are not pleasing God. But the Bible said in our text earlier that we were created for his pleasure. We were created to please him. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, that pleases God. God wants you to enlarge your capacity to please him. Not getting involved in these things and just 
um, displeasing to God on a, on a regular basis. First Corinthians chapter six and verse 18. This is another thing that doesn't please God. If you're into adultery, fornication, or any sexual sin, sometimes it doesn't have to be the physical act. The Bible said he that lusteth after a woman has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if you are flirting with somebody's wife on WhatsApp or LinkedIn or whatever platforms you have, it is just a much adultery. Adultery does not have to be the physical act. Just lusting after a woman, the Bible says. Uh, so here is something that doesn't please God. God wants us to come to the place where we please him. And brother, there's so much in store for us when we please God. Look at this. Flee fornication. Fornication is sexual sin outside of marriage. That is the acceptable thing these days because people say everybody is doing it. So I could do it too. But all those everybody else that are doing it going to hell. I hope you know that. So when you say I'll do it too, that means that you're going to hell as well. We are not pleasing God if we are into fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is outside of his body. The Bible said without. But he that commits fornication, you sin against your own body. It's right there. That's what the scripture says. You commit fornication, you sin against your own body. Let's see what the next verse says. I don't think I need it, but let's see the next verse. What? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And therefore, it ought not be in the backseat of somebody's car with somebody who you're not married to? Yeah? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, uh, which you have of God, and you are not your own? I hear people saying, I'll tell this my mouth, I could do what I like. I could go where I like. I don't got to tell you nothing. I don't got to answer you about nothing. So if you're not pleasing those whom you ought to please, how are you going to please God? All right, anybody with me? You're with me? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are on the earth. Mortify means to put to death. If you're not putting to death these members, then you're not pleasing God. Mortify, put to death therefore your members that are on the earth. What are, what, what are, what, what is he talking about? Put to death fornication. Uncleanness, which has to do with bestiality, blue movies, and no TikTok is just as bad as we. I don't mean W E, I mean French word O U I V. Probably don't, you've never seen those magazines, all right? But TikTok is just as nasty, and they just come up on your screen every time you turn on. That comes under the category of uncleanness. But then we could enjoy this now ourselves in this life. But I tell you, this is not going to get us into the life to come. This does not please God. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. That would include things like incest. Although in some, uh, some country up in wherever, Norway or somewhere, I think I just read that there's nothing called incest again. A man can marry his daughter, can marry his mother. There's no longer incest. But it has to be inordinate affection for a father to have sex with his daughter or for a mother to have sex with her son. You think it doesn't happen? Ask Jerry Springer. Anybody knows that, that, that guy? Inordinate affection. How could women, pardon me, pardon me but you know this Bagwell church. How could we have a sexual relationship with a dog? That is inordinate affection. The Bible said mortify, put it away. That does not please God. Our text says that we've been created to bring glory. We've been created to please him. Revelation 4 and 11. That's what we were created. But some of us think that we could just do whatever we like. We don't have to please anybody. I don't have to please my husband. I don't have to please my wife. I don't have to please my boss. I don't have to please nobody. I just do what I like. I'm a law unto myself. You're hearing today that you need to change. In every area of life, God has given some directives as to what we should do. The simplicity of the gospel.